Hey, this is Birdman316 out here with the solo number two again. And we have the gold tablet, but you notice there's nothing, there's no live feed on there. So, David, Perth West, you're not the only one having problems with this thing, brother. I restarted the camera three or four times. I've Restarted the bird a couple times, restarted this thing a couple times, come in and out of the app about five times, and it's no go. So I just wasted $40 on something I can't even use, just like last time. Let's restart the camera one more time. It's kind of hard to see that light down in there, because it's around the case. And there's a blue light down in this camera on the side. Unless the battery in this camera is so weak that it can't record or it can't register. I'm trying not to upset the burn here. See the screen just goes black. We're just gonna we're just gonna go anyway and hope for the best. I'm gonna hit record on this camera because last time I forgot to do it. Blue light is blinking, indicating recording, but we still don't have no live feed. So it looks like we're stuck with a dinky phone. So this gold tablet here is, uh, uh, well, I hate to say it, pretty much useless just like the other thing I bought on eBay. But anyhow, we're going to be testing some functions of this bird here. The uh, we're going to we still need to test the uh, return to humble. We're not going to let it land unless it's going to be right over here in this spot here where it's very low grass because the grass it has been cut but there's grass shavings around plus it's going to be wetness everywhere and you can see a little bit of haze like a dew right above the ground maybe about two foot off the ground but anyway uh, we are going to go ahead and put this bird up and get some footage anyway we are here this morning at a sunrise whole fly to start the motors And hold fly again to take off. No live feed, people. My friend, no live feed. I'm sorry about that. But me and David both, we found out the hard way. This gold tablet, I think me and him both wasted our money on them. We got the pink and or camera on the front of this bird and she is rock solid and we really don't have a, a whole lot of satellites we have eight satellites but um she's right there she's holding steady let me bring her down just a little bit get myself in frame here this way now the other day drone worship had a very special presentation on his channel had the 3dr guys I mean well I'm not sure if it was the 3dr guys but there are some guys responsible for that uh, some kind of green cube brain or something like that a, a newfangled device you can put in your old solo and make it a whole totally totally new bird and I learned a lot of stuff um, watching those guys we're gonna put her up and we're gonna go out this way I wish this uh, live feed worked but well, you know how drone worship says it is what it is and just roll with it and uh, don't worry about it too much. Let me do one thing. These antennas, I need to bring them down this way and down, kind of down and out like that right there. These are the stock antennas, so they should, they should, be, a, they should be fine. Let me push forward a little bit more. We're going to do a return to home now. If if this bird comes back this way, which I'm sure she will. Okay, here we go. 
Let her sit right there for a minute. Return to home. This button right here with a little house on it. You know she's going up. She's going up to a pre preset amount that I put in there. About 185, 200 feet. Just to make sure that you know, there's some trees around here. And trees everywhere you look. You just want to make sure you clear those trees when you come back home. Here she comes. Wow, she is making a beeline back here. Now remember, you can always push this button right here to stop returning to home. We just need to see. We just need to see where she's going to land. She's right above our heads now. She lands, she goes for the tall grass. I'm going to hit pause and get out of it. You notice the lights are blinking in a different fashion for return to home. Here she comes. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to see exactly where she is. She looks like she's going to be landing really, really close. What I'm going to do is uh, pause it. And she is right there. She. Uh, we took off from the pad here, the Birdman pad, the Birdman launch pad, and she is right there. In other words, her front feet will be just about on it, but you notice there's grass there, the grass is kind of tall, and there's dew on the grass, and what we don't want, we do not want, we do not want to land on that tall grass with that wet dew on there because that will get all over the lens of the camera, and uh, it would just be ugly and it would be very bad for the footage so we stopped her right before she landed i'm gonna go up with her a little bit i don't have well i do have some telemetry on the uh tablet here but i mean gps lost okay flying manually she must have lost a couple of satellites or something but you notice how she um how she drifted Oh, GPS lost again. But see this here? See the GPS comes in and goes out. But see that that's what I'm trying to tell everyone. That it's always a good idea to learn how to fly manually with manual birds. That's stupid that's early in the morning. I can't believe that. She's skipping around between eight and nine satellites here. I'm gonna go up just a little bit more and make sure there's a tree over that way. I'm gonna make sure that I clear it real good. There we go. Now you noticed on here, I don't know if you saw it on the screen or not. Every once in a while it said GPS lost, fly manually. That means that you are in sport mode, sort of, non-GPS mode. And when you fly like that and your GPS goes out, you have to know how to bring your bird home safely without GPS, should the GPS get lost. Which it did get lost there for a little bit. And GPS got lost again. It must be a, must be a bad morning for GPS or something this morning. But I am 140 meters away from myself. Let me go up a little bit more because I don't want to be behind that tree there when I'm trying to fly or stuff like that. We're 145 meters out. And we're coming back this way. There we go. We're coming back this way. So, like, I agree with everyone out there that, that flies these and been flying for a good little while, that even though you have a GPS bird, the GPS can go out and come back in at any given time. You don't never know. My gear is some more scooting here, some more stick. Here we go. Check it out. 
There she goes. I'm going to put her over this way some more. And I'm going to hit that. I want to see if her turn to home works. Even the GPS is kind of eh, iffy a little bit. I'm going to try it again. Here we go. We've got 10 satellites right now. Return to home. So she's going to go about 200 feet, which is about 62 meters. But as, as I was saying, it's always good to learn to fly these things with a total manual bird with no GPS. Wow! She turned and faced us. That's wild. Well, that's nice, but... But like I said, on return to homes, I don't, I don't really care what she does as long as she comes home safely and doesn't crash or anything. Or doesn't get lost out there in the wild blue yonder or something. And she's coming down at a pretty good clip here. She is right above the launch pad. She's actually back a little bit further. I'm going to stop her right about now. We're going to make a note of where she is, where she's right here. I pushed pause, that stopped it. And she would have landed right here in this uh, spot right over here. Which is good. There's no tall grass there. I'm going to do a full stick forward. She has some kind of wild air break on her. You know she can't see her too good. That's because, um, just like my 501S bird and my 501C bird, they're black. And that tree line, you can't see it, but check this out. You raise it above the tree line, and there she is. You can see her. I'm going to go up. I'm going to do a twirly. We're at 47% battery power. We're, we're good on battery. We're 46 now. But. but this is an example. When the GPS went out, you got to know what you're doing. you got to know how to fly. You need to know how to bring that bird back manually if the GPS ever goes out, which it did a couple of times. And she was out there drifting about I don't know, 150 meters away. I think we're facing the sun. Let me see. Yep, we're facing the sun, okay. We are 34 meters high. And personally, 34, 35, 40 meters is excellent height for any footage. The reason a lot of people put theirs up, I guess, to the uh, legal limit, uh, and some of them go a little higher I think they're just uh, showing off a little bit or testing and see how far they can push their bird and stuff. But with this one here, I've heard that if you go above the legal limit, this thing is big enough where it would ping the local um, airport tower system or, or something like that. It'll, In other words, it'll give a signal saying, hey, uh, we got a UAV over here at this location that's above the legal limit. We need to go investigate it, and guess what? With it having GPS, they can pinpoint exactly where you are. So if you decide to do something crazy with a big bird, uh, I wish you the best of luck, dear fella. Because chances are you might be uh, found out, and they might get a knock at your door or something. Even after you land, they still get the location and uh, all that good stuff and, and they can come talk to you find out oh, what's the deal uh, uh, what are you doing flying that high and uh, uh, what's the deal uh, you know uh, you're gonna take a little ride with us we're going downtown oh no so it's always good to stay legal now this one here is preset I got it preset at 385 that way I'm um, well below 
the legal, you know, the legal limit and everything, which is 400 feet with the FAA regulations and stuff. I like to, I like to play by the rules and everything, and I like to, you know, play straight down the center. Cause that way, this this thing here, if this thing here gets hits a real airplane. If you're flying too high or something with something this big and heavy, any of them can cause damage and cause catastrophic uh, results for his, air, his airplane. But this thing here, this thing here weighs a bunch, and it would really cause some damage. That I think that most people would feel pretty bad if they caused a crash, you know, and you know cost uh, human life and everything. Trying to let's see if I can go a thousand feet up, yeah, you know, something like that. Yeah, you, know, you gotta consider that, you know. You got people on in those airplanes and stuff, and you know you can't be doing crazy stuff like that. So I got this one set at 385. It's the highest this will go that I have it set on this app with, which I can't see my live feed. I got no live feed. That stinks. We're at 28% battery power. We're gonna make a left turn and we're gonna come back this way because we're not going to run this battery totally dry it's not good to do that it's good to do it one time but it's not good to do that all the time okay here we're going to slow down a little bit and drop the throttle drop the altitude a little bit now here we come Yeah, flight battery 25%. We are coming in just in time. It's like a real airplane approaching. Here we go. Alrighty, we're going to land over here on this uh, pad over here. Not the landing launch pad or anything, but... Uh, We're gonna land over here in this short grass. We're gonna bring over here just a little bit this way, and we're gonna land her right here. Here we go. I believe this will be good. Let me bring it down a little bit. A little bit more. That way, and this way a little bit towards myself. Now we're gonna drop her very slowly. 21% battery power. All I gotta do is hold the stick all the way down like that. Hold the stick down. And you heard her. Solo battery is too low for flight. You notice she landed. And there's nothing all over the lens. There's, everything is good. There's one little blade of grass touching the camera, but it's not touching the lens. Once she's on the ground, you just reach over here and hit the power switch. And she cuts herself off. And you do the same thing for the transmitter. You feel a little vibration and you let go of the switch and it shuts itself off. And that's too bad this app didn't. This app was fine, but the, this tablet, I don't know what the deal is. But it didn't work. It didn't, uh, it didn't give me live feed. It, it did one time in the living room testing it out, but out here in the field where you really need it to, it didn't do it. I'm gonna stop recording on this camera here. I hope it's recording here. I'm not really sure if it is. I don't see no red. Let me see something. Oh, we were never recording on the camera here. We only got two battery light, battery bars anyway, so we're gonna go ahead and cut this camera totally off. I think, I don't think we got any footage on this uh, camera here. I think the battery, too low on the camera but anyway this has been another test flight of the 3dr solo number two now after this flight i'm gonna put her back in her box and everything and she's gonna be a backup for the other one in case something ever happens to it which we hope nothing happens to it but you don't never know these things they have a mind of their own sometimes and that anything can happen anytime there we go. This is Birdman 316. I hope you like that flight. Thanks for hanging out with the old Birdman and Solo number two. 
is Birdman 316. Sayonara.